everybody. Welcome to Anti-Chess Law. And we have a very special edition. We have a very honoured guest with us today, uh, one of the greatest anti-chess players, perhaps of time, certainly one of the best today. Welcome to Fire That Prime. How are you doing? Awesome. I'm happy and excited to be here. I don't know that I would say I'm the best or one of the best, but uh, above average. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good to have you here. So I'm going to ask Fire about some questions today, a bit about his own history and about and, uh, himself. And he's actually going to go through some of a couple of his favorite games as well. So we're going to learn something. Um, to get started with, you've been around even longer than I have. You were on Fix back in the 90s. And I noticed you played well in excess of 20,000 games even at that time. So I want to start with why anti-chess? Um, it's a big game. Um, chess is obviously the most popular one. There are other variants. But what was your attraction particularly to and suicide, as it was called back in the day? Um, well, I'd say that I wasn't like a huge chess player. Like I was slightly above average at chess also. Like I was okay. Um, when I started playing, I didn't have a lot of friends that played chess. And that's kind of where I went and explored online chess to see if I could find some better opponents to play. Um, and so I started off on fix. I think it was 1997. I was 17 years old. Um, <clears throat> I want to say that like fix is an interface was really goofy and clunky and really like it's nothing like what Lee chess was. So when I started playing, there was a bunch of like abbreviations and all kinds of stuff that was in the system that I didn't know what any of it meant. So I was trying to just play some chess game and that's where I accidentally played a game of suicide. Um, that's a nice start. <laughs> right. And so I'm playing and this guy just starts like, sacrificing his pieces or whatever and i'm thinking man this guy is like he's either really bad or i'm falling for some type of trap that I'd have, i've never seen before um and the next thing i know like i put him in check and he moves a different piece and i'm like oh man like something's wrong here like there's an error in the system or something's going on so like i i couldn't move anywhere else and i was like all right i guess i'll just take his king because what else am i gonna do and I take his king and then he moves again. And I'm like, all right, now I, I'm clearly lost. I don't know what's going. And I think I ended up just resigning the game and like asking the, like the, the player, like what's, what's going on here. And then that's when he explained to me that I was playing suicide and that the object was to lose my pieces. And so like he went ahead and explained the rules to me. Um, and so then I played a few more games and absolutely got crushed every single time. But um, I found it like it was intriguing. And I noticed like the strategy with it was different than regular chess, but there was still something like satisfying. Like I was losing, but being like forced to just take all of his pieces. So like, you know, those, your standard force loss openings. Like I would start with, you know, D4 and then all of a sudden my Bishop goes through every single one of his pieces. And, and like, I was just like, my mind was blown with that. And I was like, I want to be able to do that. Um, <laughs> so I think that was kind of my first like um, interest in the game was like, I want to be able to. It's a bit different. Uh, and unlike regular chess, you, you've compelled to make and sometimes many many moves in a row so it's kind of fun to line it all up yeah and i and i i guess like when i play regular chess it's like you can make moves and like set up some type of trap or something like that like you're expecting oh the, the opponent should take this piece and then he doesn't take the piece and then all of a sudden you've got a completely different game and i think with anti-chess it was the game was a little simpler um not easier by any means, but simpler. And the game was shorter, which was another thing that I was kind of attracted by is that you could 
you can knock out a game in two or three minutes and it's a, it's a legitimate game where a regular chess game can just keep going on um, for eternity, basically. So that was kind of like my, I guess my main draw to it. Like I thought it was, I, it was unique and it was entertaining and I, I liked it. So I, I went at it and started to learn. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I like that description because sometimes it's hard to say why you like a game, but yeah, that, I, I like that uh, analysis there. So when you're on there, you play many games and, and fix the way it's set up. It's a bit more friendly than, than Lee Chess, I think, in some ways where there's uh, open channels. You can talk to people a bit more easily. But in, in the end, you are there to play. So did you uh, spend any time doing other things like uh, chatting to other people, making any other... Um, connections or having discussions or was it really just business and I want to crush people at anti chess? Right. Not too much chatting when I first got started. Um, there weren't like arena chats and there weren't with, there were no forums um, and things like that. There wasn't like a lot of chatting that would was happening outside of like in the general channels. And I think technically there was a suicide channel as well. Uh, 91 if I'm correct um, but it didn't really seem like there was a lot of conversations or at least when I was there there weren't a lot of conversations that was happening it was more like hey who wants to play we're trying to you know get some games together kind of thing so um, I'd say like when I first started it was it was mostly just finding games um, and then the time control I was playing zero one was my main time control once I got going. And those games are just nonstop fast. So it's, there's no, no time to chat during the game by any means. And so it was more like small talk afterwards, you know, like you're well played, good game kind of thing. See you around next time. So I, I didn't, uh, I guess I didn't build any like strong relationships at the time um when I was doing it so like I had I had like my friends that I played often but it was like again it was more small talk and mutual respect kind of thing you could set up like notifications when somebody came online and I could see oh this guy's online and I can go knock out 20 games with him yeah that's cool I guess everyone's different like um because I, I had other friends that probably introduced me to fix and then I talked to them and um yeah, I kind of use it more as a social engine, but oh, really? that means less time for playing. You can see I, I didn't play nearly as much, so that's kind of a trade-off, I suppose. So apart from playing all those games, you played zero one, one so you probably would have stacked up a lot of uh, games on that. But apart from just playing, how do you think you really improved and got good? Because obviously back then there was no stockfish to analyze. Right. Um, how, do you, how do you get good? That was, I mean, that was the huge difference, that there was no stockfish. And so it, it literally it was just trial and error. Um, and I that's kind of how I learn in general with anything is just by by making mistakes. Um, and I feel like I've got a knack for strategy games, and things like that. So um, it was really just playing a lot of games, but it wasn't even total games. It was playing against strong players. So I guess that's the other thing. So when I, I started off, um, I don't know, maybe 1700s or whatever in that range, but I was always playing the 1900 folks and the people that were over 2000. Like I wasn't really ever playing the, the weaker opponents. And it was, and I think that since there were no arenas, really, it was like you just played whatever ads were, you know, out to choose from and so i was always just there, there were tournaments um i mean actually i love playing tournaments on there but they were for all things and mostly chess but occasionally they did have um very tournaments there and i was... played i played in a few of like the swiss tournaments that they organized but again most of the time that would be um i think you had to have a particular admin available to like create the tournaments right and then um, it would usually be like in channel 91, there would be like four or six or eight of us um, in there that were like requesting, hey, can we get a suicide tournament? And we would play it. So I would say like most of my games were against the stronger opponents. Um, 
I was thinking about it too. Like on Lee Chess, you can do like Lee Chess TV and you can do lots of observing. And watch I didn't TV. really, what's that? You can watch people on the TV, yes. Right. And I think technically you could observe other people on fix too, but I, I didn't really do that too much um, to like watch the other players, which that would be something that I would recommend for people now trying to get better would be to just watch good players play against each other. Um, Cause if, if you're starting off and you want to be playing the good players to kind of see what they're doing, but if you're responding poorly to it, you're just going to lose. So watching, you know, pairs of good players play against each other, definitely helpful. But yeah. for me, it was playing those strong players over and over again and kind of seeing where the traps that they set and the positions that they would get into. Um, so it's, you got to play a lot of games, but you also have to like learn from the positions that you're in. Like, all right, this is uncomfortable. This is the first thing you learn. And then from there, it's like, okay, what are these advanced tactics? But I mean, so unlike you, I didn't play like thousands and thousands of games, but I did actually find a couple of resources. I mean, I, I sort of found a couple of web pages with, um, I think it was like the Null Attack book was on there. So oh, really? I actually learned some openings using that. And that helped. Okay. Like a lot. So, but that probably wasn't around for you in the early days, and you probably already knew it because I didn't even start on that 03. So by then, there were some actually resources like that that helped me to learn faster, um, at least for the opening theory. And the rest was um, yeah, just kind of working it out. I mean, I used to play a guy called Douthy, who's still on Lee Chess yeah. now. Yeah. A lot of games. But I remember, yeah, he he just like you played thousands and thousands, and I think I learned a lot of like ending techniques from, from him crushing me the first few times. Right. So yeah, there's different ways, I suppose, you can learn. Yeah, um, def definitely different ways. And people have different aptitudes for different things. And there's different styles of play, too. So there, you might be watching or trying to learn something that doesn't really fit what you're comfortable with. So, And on Fix, there was that game called Losers at the time, too. And uh, I, I probably played that equally as much as I played Suicide Chess, which was a totally different style in some ways where you're kind of hanging on to your pieces more until you're trying to block one pawn at the end. So that changed the style again and, and made me made, maybe modify my own Suicide Chess style as well. Yeah, absolutely. I played that game too, not as, not as much as I played Suicide. Um, and it wasn't there when I first started, and I don't remember what year it got added, but when it... Until about, I think, 02 or thereabouts, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it was like right at the end when I was playing there that it kind of showed up, and I, I enjoyed that one quite a bit. I felt that that had a little bit more options than anti-chess in the sense that, like, there weren't really... There wasn't, like, a forced loss on anything in the opening. I mean, you could get to a bad spot pretty quickly, but it wasn't... Like, you could you can open with any piece you want and still be okay. Yeah. All right, so now, like most people, life gets in the way, you know, a lot of people play chess uh, when they're young and then finish university or college, go off, take work, have family, etc. So I'm guessing same thing happened to you, like 95% of everyone else. Yes. Um, yep. So during that time, you know, you are away for a long time, then you came back. So did you ever give uh, this game a, a second thought during that time? Do you ever think? I wouldn't mind a game of this. Because uh, I think, for, for me, yeah, I was absent for maybe 10 years myself, but maybe like once a year I'd log on and play a game or something. Okay. Um, but really my question is, yeah, not just did you think of it, but what made you come back in the end? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I feel bad for saying this, but I don't know that I really thought about it too much. Like when I yeah. stopped playing. So like I, I've, graduated from college I got a real job and I had to work normal human hours and stuff so I couldn't just stay up till four in the morning playing anti-chess so it was like all right I have to go to work I have to sleep at night instead of playing chess shortly after that I got married and then a few years later I'm having kids and stuff like that and so I wasn't really thinking about anti-chess or suicide at all like I was um had different priorities essentially but that didn't mean that i had stopped doing like strategy games and stuff too so i think that was another part of it um like i even when i was playing 
um, anti-chess when I was young, I was still doing other strategy games. So all over the place. So like, um, like Stratego or Connect Four, um, like games like StarCraft or even like Dr. Mario, like random, anything that has a strategy to it. Like I was playing that. And then most for Grandmaster. Um, maybe, maybe I can't find opponents that can beat me, but it's, there's not a lot of people playing connect for, um, but the, the main thing that I do is I, I play cards and I, I grew up playing cards. That was actually where I started learning strategy games. Um, and, and I was thinking, I know one of the other questions you would have asked was where did I like first learn to play chess? And I was like thinking about that. I was like, you know what? Like, I don't remember my first chess game. Like, I know that my dad explained the rules to me, but we never even played. Um, so it was just something that at some point I picked up. Like, we grew up playing cards. So um, I think I was like seven or eight when I learned how to play hearts. And my dad was a good card player. And he didn't like go easy on us. So like my brother and me and like my mom and dad would play hearts. And um, he would like crush us at a young age, you know, and then, but then he would explain to me like, all right, this is, I know I can play this card because these other cards have already come out. And so I know that this one's safe or it's not safe. And so like, I think that's where I learned strategy and also learned that I liked it. Um, so like at eight years old, I was like learning how to count cards and then that translated to other card games. And, and so that was, that was the main thing that I was doing. So like when I got married, like I was like, all right, I, I have to split up my, you know, my free time or whatever it is. And so I mostly played poker with what I was doing with my free time. So I wasn't thinking about anti-chess. And then as far as getting back into it, I had a buddy that he's a good chess player and like we would play other stuff, but he, he was watching, um, he had like a grandmaster that he was watching on YouTube and he showed me a video. He's like, Hey, watch this video about chess or whatever. And I was like, and I don't even remember who it was, but somebody was like teaching a lesson on chess on YouTube and they were on Lee chess. And I was like, what, what site is this? This looks kind of neat. And I wonder if they have suicide chess. And so I, I you know, and I, I logged on and it's like, oh, anti-chess, all right, it's got a different name, but it looks like the same thing. And then next thing you know, I'm signed up and I'm playing again. And here I am. Yeah, I think for me, like the, the convenience of it, um, I, I just play on my phone most of the time. So when my friend told me about Lee Chess and told me that, yeah, Suicide Chess was on there. Well, <clears throat> he first told me about it and said, oh, there's this world championship sign of Suicide Chess. Remember you used to be really good at that? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I used to be. Right. So I, I had a go and I, I was like, oh, well, okay, I'm pretty rusty. But then, yeah, things sort of came back. And I think in the end, you know, I'm a stronger player now than I ever was mm -hmm. just because of uh, what's changed. So that kind of leads on to my next question. You know, how, how are things different now than they were before? I mean, apart from the obvious ones that, yeah, we have Stockfish now. It's probably the number one. Uh, we can analyze the games. Um, but, yeah, what else do you think has just changed about the game of anti-chess in general since that time? And that's an interesting question. So I don't think I don't think a ton has changed as far as, like, the strength of players or the strategies that are being used. I think that there's probably more players playing now and I think that there's a larger number of strong players where like when I was playing I felt like there was usually I don't know maybe 10 or 20 people over 2,000 at any given time and like those people would disappear and some new people would show up so I think the quantity of players is is greater and then I would say that it does seem like with the analysis that's available um, and the resources that are out there that I, I feel like people get started with the opening game pretty well, um, maybe better than before, but I feel like the game itself is still exactly the same yeah. from my perspective anyways. Yeah, I guess so. And so that kind of leads on to the different styles of play. So there are some people 
people who really try to book bash all the openings as much as they can, get an advantage. Uh, for others, they want to learn more about the mechanics and how this middle game works. And you're kind of an expert at a particular thing called intermediate. So I think what I'd like to ask you now, I think you've got a couple of games you'd like to show us. So uh, perhaps you can get that up for us now and uh, go through and you can teach us all about uh, right. the secrets of intermediates. All right, give me a second here. I'm going to pull up Lee Chess. <laughs> 